All right, welcome to this creepy restaurant over here where we see a fetus. We see this creepy looking fetus over here, which is actually exactly what the fetus looks like at about six to seven weeks gestation. Now we recall that the fetus has various pharyngeal arches. We see the various pharyngeal arches over here, and between them are the pouches. And because it can be extremely hard to remember what the arches and pouches develop into, we've created this really creepy scene over here. Quite apropos, a creepy scene for a creepy fetus. So let's begin. In this creepy restaurant over here, they have various arches, golden arches, kind of reminds me of McDonald's. These six arches over here are going to represent the pharyngeal arches. You may have noticed that arch number five is kind of missing. It's kind of invisible. And this reminds us that arch five really makes no major developmental contributions. But let's take a look at the rest of the arches over here. And these arches are going to remind us of all the different features of the pharyngeal arches. After this, we'll talk about the pouches. So the first arch in this restaurant over here has this monster guy chewing, and he's chewing on the M. Chewing reminds us that the first pharyngeal arch is all about chewing. Muscles of mastication. Actually, all the different features of the first pharyngeal arch are associated with the letter M, and that's why he's chewing on the letter M over here. M for muscles of mastication, temporalis masseter, medial and lateral pterygoid, mylohyoid, maxillary process, mandibular process, malleus and incus, and sphenomandibular ligament. All of these are associated with the first pharyngeal arch. We can also remember micronathia, associated with Pierre Robin sequence, or Pierre Robin syndrome, in which patients who have a problem with the development of the first pharyngeal arch develop micronathia, a small receding chin, along with airway obstructions. And then we take a look at the second creepy monster over here in this restaurant, and he has the seven on top of his head. And that's because the second pharyngeal arch is associated with cranial nerve seven, the nerve responsible for facial expression, which is why this monster over here is trying to smile. I know it doesn't look like it, but he's trying to smile. In fact, his motto is smile, which is why it says smile behind him. We see that he has a staple in his ear. I know this staple doesn't look like a regular staple. It's in the shape of an S. This reminds us of the stapedius. Staple for stapedius. Actually, everything about the second pharyngeal arch is all about S. Stapedius, stylohyoid, platysma, which is why we see an S by his platysma, styloid process, lesser horn of the hyoid, and for that we can see this small horn over here, small horn for lesser horn, lesser horn of the hyoid, and styloid hyoid ligament. Again, second pharyngeal arch, all about seven and S. Cranial nerve seven and the letter S. I told you this restaurant was weird. Then we take a look at the third and fourth arches in this restaurant over here, and it says swallow in front of it, because the third and fourth arches are all about swallowing. The third is associated with only one muscle, the stylopharyngeus. It's also associated with the greater horn of the hyoid. Well, how are we going to remember that? Well, the monster that was standing in front of this arch over here actually ran away, and he put a stylus on top of it with Pharaoh's hat. So Pharaoh stylus, or stylopharyl, for stylopharyngeus. The third pharyngeal arch is associated with the stylopharyngeus. And on top of it, he put a large horn. Large horn for greater horn. Greater horn of the hyoid. And finally, the big glass of wine that he balanced on top of it for fun reminds us of nine. Wine for nine. And the third pharyngeal arch is associated with cranial nerve nine. So that was the first part of swallowing. The fourth pharyngeal arch is associated with the rest of swallowing, where we see this guy over here trying to swallow, as the fourth arch is associated with, again, swallowing. But here, he's trying to swallow the letter C. C reminds us of constrictors, as the fourth arch is associated with the constrictors, most of the pharyngeal constrictors, as well as the cricothyroid. So again, C for constrictors and C for cricothyroid. And again, the fifth arch is absent. It's invisible because the fifth arch makes no major developmental contributions. And then we get up to the sixth arch where we see this guy trying to speak. I know it doesn't really look like it, but he's actually trying to speak. The sixth arch is associated with speaking as its derivatives are the recurrent and inferior laryngeal branch of cranial nerve 10 involved in speaking. And muscles include all intrinsic muscles of the larynx, except the cricothyroid. For as we mentioned, the fourth pharyngeal arch is associated with the cricothyroid. C for cricothyroid. An important derivative that we didn't talk about was the thyroid, and that's associated with both the fourth and the sixth. But let's end off this video by talking about the pouches. Now the pouches are actually much easier, and there's already a famous mnemonic out there for this. Ears, tonsils, bottom to top. Ears, tonsils, bottom to top. Ears for the first pouch, tonsils for the second pouch, bottom two for the third pouch, and top for the fourth pouch. Ears, as the first pouch is associated with ear structures, the middle ear cavity, eustachian tube, and mastoid air cells. The second pouch, tonsils, epithelial lining of the palatine tonsils. The third pouch, bottom two, bottom for inferior thyroids, and two for thymus. And top, 
for the superior parathyroids, as well as the parafollicular C cells of the thyroid. Alright, I know this video was extremely weird. I hope you enjoyed. Take care.